This is BCN. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We hope you have a nice Thanksgiving with your family and friends, as strange as it is for 2020. And usually at this time, we have trivia time, but decided to do a magic comedy and music special from bits and pieces of some of my Magic Mondays I've done in the past, some of the variety shows that I've done from the past, and also some of my episodes of the 100th show and the 200th show and the 150th show that we've done. So my friends and uh, uh, magicians from around the world are gonna perform for you today. We hope that you'll enjoy it. We hope you have a great day. And we'll see you on Friday for our trivia time show 210. But right now, sit back and relax. Uh, pour yourself a nice tall drink and enjoy the show as we present trivia time and uh, a little bit of magic, music, and comedy. Have a great day, everybody. Abra, Kadabra. back in the States and we hope you like it too. Ladies and gentlemen, sawing a live woman in half. and gentlemen, Les McKinney and Janice. Um, and now, the trick you have been waiting for. All right. My last. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not, it's not. Look, I have an, a drawer. Look how nice. Give him your... Isn't that table a beautiful yes. table? Yeah. I brought it from Ventura County in my suitcase. No, no, that's beautiful, beautiful, very, very good. Now, if you ever work in Italy as a magician, never ask a spectator to cut the deck. <laughs> never. Don't do that. Because they literally do that. They literally, you see, have some <laughs> cards I cut into two. I know. I know, I know, I know. That's so, 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 so sad. Um, there are some jumbo cards, actually, big, big cards. It's cheap and giving away binoculars to all of you at this point. Uh, <laughs> that uh, you can 
you can shuffle face up or face down and so on and so on. Actually, Kimberly, would you like to be so kind to cut this packet like this anywhere you like? Doesn't really matter. Okay? Wonderful. Oh, fantastic. Would you like to cut this well, this one as well? No problema. Oh, I speak Spanish as well. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. Uh, and your name is? Ginelle. Gin Ginelle. Ginelle. Ginella, Ginella would be in Italian. Kim we don't have Kimberlini. No. No. You speak Italian, you see. Yeah. Yeah, poly polyglot. Um. Please take any card. Don't let me see the face. No, I can. So sorry. So sorry. This packet will be on the table at all time. I won't touch it until later. You will see why it's very important. This, this. Okay. Please take any card. Actually, touch any card more or less in the middle of the packet so that it's more interesting. But leave the card exactly in the same position. I know it's my face. Everybody, look at me. Everybody, because everything I say looks like a joke. <laughs> but it's not. It's right, not. I'm just going to touch it. Be serious. Touch it. The card, yes. Any, no, no, no. You see, you have dirty minds. I didn't say anything. You have a dirty minds. I didn't say anything. Please, any, any card, just touch. This one. That one. This one is very, very important. Okay, now, I, I, very important that it's exactly in the same position. This is the card. You could have touched one card, one position below, or two cards um, below. This. I'm going to leave the card protruding so you see it. It's, I didn't change it. It's still there, exactly in the same position. Okay? This packet was on the table at all times from the very beginning. Watch. I'm going to turn over this, the card like this. There's no matching in this. Could be, maybe one or two, I don't know. There are no match so far. All the cards are shuffled. There are two, two face cards, but one is a queen and the jack and so on. You could have touched this card, for example. No match. You could have touched this one, the card right above your no match. I'm going to take your card and the card at exactly the same position but on the other packet, okay? And you touch the very next card. You see, no match, no match, no match. No two cards are matching. No two halves are matching. You could have touched this card, any card. I mean, remember, you, you, shuffled, the, you shuffled the deck and so and so on. Watch. You touched the only. Oh. Thank you. We rehearsed this the whole day. That was really good. But if you do this now, if you touch with these two cards, the packet, remember, no. now you have all six and all the jack and all the five and the, the eight and the two and the seven and the king and the nine and the eight. The ten. Well, you ever play cards? You go to Walmart, you buy a deck of cards. They're pretty expensive these days, four, five, six dollars. And I found a source that has decks of cards for only a nickel. That's right, only a nickel. It's a factory in Ohio. So I said for a nickel, that's a great deal. So I spent $400 round trip to buy a deck of cards for a nickel. Who's crazy now, huh? Well, I got the deck of cards. It was completely blank on the outside. Well, I can deal with that. But when I opened up the deck of cards, something strange happened because I looked at the deck of cards uh, and they were completely blank. Not only the faces, but also the back. Uh, actually, I don't know which ones the faces are and which ones the backs are, but you really can't play cards with these. Unless, of course, you're a magician, you could actually print up some cards. Say I want to print up a, a red card. Say I want to print up the Six of Diamonds. All I had to do was just print it up just like magic. And uh, of course, now if I want to print up a different card, say I want to print up a black card like the Ten of Clubs, I just rub it like that and of course the Ten of Clubs prints up. So now we got some decks of cards, uh, cards that are printing up one after the other. The faces are relatively easy. The backs are impossible, but I'll get to those in just a second. So now we have cards with faces and backs and backs and faces until it looks like a complete deck of cards with uh, faces and backs just like that. But that's impossible because you know one minute ago there was no face on this card. 
and there was no back on that card. And when they come from the factory, they're only a nickel. The reason why they're only a nickel is because there's no faces, no backs, no backs or faces. And that's Magic Monday for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a real nice day. See you again real soon. excited for this opportunity to be on Magic Monday once again because perhaps the thing that I truly truly most love about magic is it reminds us life is filled with surprises but that's not the whole story or well, perhaps perhaps I should say whole story not in the sense of something missing but whole in the sense of being complete therefore it is a whole and go, ah. Mm. When we ignore this difference, life surprises can get us so turned around, it can put us on the spot. Now, some people, I know none of you watching Magic Monday, but some people see life surprises as problems to be ignored, while others as opportunities to be explored. And since this is Magic Monday, let's take a closer look. This spot is made by taking a hole and placing it in front of a hole. Makes sense, right? This spot, though, is different. If you look closely, why, there isn't a hole there. Everyone yells, surprise! Surprise! Now, when we embrace surprise, not as a hole, but as part of a hole, opportunities pop up everywhere. Even in the most unlikely of places, helping us to grow to whole new heights. And when it comes to magic, well, that, my friends, <clears throat> is the whole story. But not in the sense of something missing, but in the sense of being complete. Thank you so much for tuning in to Magic Monday. We're gonna do a magic trick right now that's only gonna take place 
in your mind. There's five playing cards written out here. Seven of hearts, king of spades, three of hearts, six of clubs, and the ten of diamonds. Place your finger on the seven of hearts. Now, I want you to move five times, left or right, and you can go back and forth as many times as you want, but left or right, only five moves. Starting here, count one, two, three, four, and so on until you get to five. Any direction you want, starting right there. Ready? Go. All right, you should have landed on one of these cards. Stop there for just a second. And I can tell you that right now, your finger is not on the seven of hearts, and it's also not on the ten of diamonds, so we're gonna eliminate those. Now those grids are out. No more using those grids. So whichever one you're on right now, I want you to move just one more grid over, either right or left, in these three grids right here. So make one more move, you got it? Perfect. Now I can tell you that your finger is not on the king of spades, so we're gonna eliminate that. Now you just have these two left, the three of hearts and the six of clubs. I want you to move one more time. Wherever your finger is, move it one over, either to the three of hearts or six of clubs based on where your finger's at. One last move. Did you do it? Awesome. So right now you're either thinking of the three of hearts or the six of clubs. Keep thinking of your card and watch the Sharpie. I'm about to do something amazing. I'm gonna read somebody's mind. Hmm, can anybody predict which mind I'm gonna read? <laughs> hey, you're not busy, are you? <laughs> okay, I've made a prediction. A prediction is I know what's gonna happen before it happens. Wow, I, I, I just know these things. I, I bet you have premonitions like that. I mean, Sometimes. How many times has your phone rung and you knew there was somebody calling you? Always, when always phone something phone. so. Always, yeah. you know? So here's my prediction. On the back of my business card, I wrote the name of a country. Why? Why a country? I have an unusual deck of cards. This deck is called Cards of All Nations because on the back, look at it, it's got the United States with the United States flag. There's Chile. It is Chile, isn't it? And then we have Sweden, and you're, you're from Holland. Let's see if we can come up. You're not Norway, no, right? No, not Norway. Close. New Zealand. Oh, no, 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 that's no. Oh, hey, Nether you know. okay, Netherlands would yep. count, right? You're mm -hmm. in the Netherlands, so I'm not gonna have you pick a card because you think these you know magicians do this, they kind of force a card. You can actually, free choice, have anybody call out the name of any card whatsoever. So you may concentrate a minute, think of a card you would call out, and you go right ahead. Eight of spades. Eight of spades. And we're going to take, actually, you're going to take out the eight of spades. And on the back of it will be a country. And they're in order, so it's really easy to find the spades and what goes to hearts and so on. So we'll go down to, there's the eight of spades. You may remove that yourself. And you can show the audience what country did you pick. Looks like, what is Canada? it? Canada. Oh, Canada! Canada. And what country did I predict on my business card? <laughs> Canada, eh? There you go. Alright, this is every woman's favorite trick. The money trick. Here's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 dollars. Uh, for real and for true. Oh wait, Mr. Magician, you're going. I'm watching closely. And those are definitely not $20 bills. In which case I say, don't blink. This is not an edit. Because when I say these are 20, I mean that these are 20, 40, 60, 80, $100 for real and for true.
Hello everyone, this is Michael Mirth, and look, I'm at the world-famous Magic Castle. You know, one of the most famous illusions in magic is sawing a woman in half. And then later, Robert Harbin created a fantastic illusion where he zigzagged a girl, dividing her into thirds. So let's give that a try with this piece of apparatus. And here is our assistant for the afternoon. Let's put her inside like this or over here. And there she is. Let's make sure we can see all of her inside the illusion. There she is. And now sometimes blades were introduced into this portion and this portion. And then her middle section would be slid out and away to one side. And there we see her in the divided condition. But it's always important in creating magic like this to bring her back, resurrect her in metaphor so that she is complete once again and exit from the illusion. Hold. One of my favorite tricks involving a little shot glass, a handkerchief, a drinking mug, a wand, and a little ball. Ah, I have a ball every time I do this trick. The idea is to get the little ball to go under the cup. Well, I just put it there, that's no trick. To get the little ball to go under the cup, you have to hit it like this, hit it like that, and it goes under the cup. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. So let's do it. Put the ball over here, hit it over there, and it goes under the cup. Isn't that remarkable? Everybody, can you come in here for just a second? May I just have your hand? Hold the little ball right like that. We're going to put the cup, as a matter of fact, hold it. Put, put your hand on top. Now seal the little vacuum. If I take the little ball, hit it like that. Did you feel that? She certainly did. There's the ball. Thank you, Roberta. 
Now, a lot of people think that there's a hole in the bottom of this cup. If there were, it would fall right through, which it doesn't do. Now the hard part. Getting a little, in fact, I don't even need the ball at all. I have, yes, I do. It goes back here where I need it. Now, fine. Getting the little ball to go into the shot glass. Well, that, they don't pay you for that. So now getting the little ball to go into the shot glass as if by magic. Watch the little ball going into the shot glass. One, two, three. Ah, hilaria. That's to find out how many of my people are watching. A little like that. And there it is under the golly. I'm sorry. It goes back into the pocket. But we've got to get it back into the cup. So I promise you like this. One, two, three, one, two. And there it is back into the cup. If, I tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to explain how this gets under there. No, I can't really explain it because this ball is in the way. Hi folks, Jonas Kane here and I am thrilled to be a special guest on Magic Monday. One of the things that I most love about magic is it reminds us life is filled with surprises. Now, some surprises are big surprises while other surprises are, oh, little tiny baby surprises. And still, other surprises are your everyday average run-of-the-mill surprises. The question becomes, how do we respond to these surprises? Well, we have the simple choice to respond by being frustrated and giving up, or we can choose to respond by being fascinated and building ourselves up. Now, I would suggest that if we remember to be fascinated by life, that's when we realize these surprises have an equal opportunity to produce amazing results for our lives. And that, my friends, is truly what I most love about magic. And that is another episode of Magic Monday. Hi. When people find out that I'm a magician, the first question they ask me is, is, where do you learn all those cool card tricks and things? Well, there's a little known fact amongst magicians that people don't know is that we actually train the cards to help us do magic. Yep. And we start off training them when they're really young, just like these guys. Now, I've been working with these guys for a little while now, and I think they're about ready to help me show you a magic trick. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the four aces. Now, I'm going to give the cards a little bit of a shuffle. And I'm going to place the cards inside of this glass. Now, the aces are going to appear at the face of the deck, but we're going to go for the uh, two red aces first, so we're going to need a red card at the face of the deck, which is going to act as a magnetic card to find the other aces. 
So I need a red card. Okay. They're perfect. The Seven of Diamonds will go to the face of the deck and that will attract the other red aces. And if you watch close, I'm going to cover them briefly with this silk. And there is the first ace. The Ace of Diamonds. Now the uh, next ace is the Ace of Hearts. Watch close. And there is the Ace of Hearts. Now let's get rid of that ace in the deck and we'll go for the last two aces, the black aces. So to attract the black aces we need a black card at the face of the deck so let me find a black card right there perfect black card now there's two black aces the ace of clubs and the ace of spades which one would you like me to find first shout it out mm, okay I heard the uh, Ace of Spades. Let's try Ace right there. And finally, the last one would be the Ace of Clubs, like so. And there is the Ace of Clubs. Bob, I was looking through some newspaper clippings that I've saved about you. Here's one from March 19th, 2020. Bob Carroll's Trivia Network starts today on Facebook. It draws fans from around the world, but mostly from New York and New England. Here's one from September 2019. Comedian Bob Carroll publishes a book, My Favorite Jokes, one of my favorites. Here's one from June 27th, 2020. The BCN airs its 100th show today. That was remarkable. Here's one, no date on it. Wife of 46 years, Debbie Carroll joins the BCN network as co-writer and producer. And one more here. BCN threatened with shutdown, but still going strong today. And here's today's top story. Congratulations, Bob, on your 200th show. The mystery of the Chinese rings. Three rings, all made of solid gold. You just rub them together like that, and they'll link together. And then black apart. Now you see it's just pantomime. I just pull them like this and I tap them together yeah. like that. And it looks like they're really linked, but they're not. Okay. So that's, that's why I thought hypnotism would be good. Jim is a hypnotist and he's given me some lessons. And I've uh, been able to hypnotize people into thinking that the uh, rings are actually one right to the other. Yes, sir. Yes, there is a hole in the ring. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> There is a hole right through the middle and you take the ring out, just like that. I'll tell you, the real secret, there's a soft spot on the ring. If you bang on the soft spot, it weakens up, it goes straight through. Of course, you can reach through the hole and take the ring out like that. Look, you'll not see, you'll not see this again this close. So one, two, on the third tap, it goes right straight through. 
but we can get rid of this ring because this ring is three times softer. Than, oh, sorry about that. Went <laughs> straight through like that. And uh, can you do me a favor? Stand up right where you are. Stand up right where you are. Okay. Grab the ring. It's really in there, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Go through the wall. Through the wall. Perfect. A little harder. Like that. Just like this, like that. Right back to the heart. Let's give it a hand. Let's do something with uh, some coins. And I broke mine into my piggy bank. And a silver dollar, you don't see many silver dollars anymore. Uh, in fact, I got a couple. There's another silver dollar. We have a 50 cent piece and uh, <laughs> a quarter and a dime, which is probably worth about a penny these days. So we're gonna do a trick with all these and uh, watch carefully. Two empty hands and some coins. We're gonna take one of the silver dollars and place it inside my hand. My hand won't go out of the frame, so you can watch everything really carefully. We're gonna take a, a 50 cent piece, place it in with the uh, silver dollar. Uh, a quarter, we'll take a quarter, place it in with the silver dollar. And uh, finally, a dime, we'll place that inside with the uh, other silver dollar and the other coins. And finally, the last silver dollar. So if you were paying attention, you know that I have $2.85 inside my hand. We're going to get rid of one of the coins. Let's get rid of, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's get rid of one of the silver dollars. We'll take the silver dollar, place it right there on the mat. That leaves me with a dollar eighty-five. Well, actually it doesn't. Uh, it leaves me with uh, absolutely nothing. Just two empty hands, just the way I started. Well, I lose a dollar eighty-five every time I do that trick. So let's see if we can do something uh, magical. We'll take the uh, silver dollar, place it inside the mat, give it a little shake, just like this, and I think something magical has happened because if I snap my fingers, ah, good, look, <laughs> I made some money. This was the first trick I owned. And in order to become a good magician, you have to do a lot of shows. So what I would do, I would go to St. Christopher's Hospital in Philadelphia, and I would do shows for the sick kids, which is where I fell in love with performing. And this is one of the tricks I used to do. I'm going to do this trick for you right now. But I've said it all to a poem, so the kids would pay attention. Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, three men and three tubs, went sailing out to sea, the first in tub number one, the second in tub number two, and the third in tub number three. Now this boat was old, but the captain was bold, and he was raring to go, so he jumped on the deck and he fell through the wreck and he wound up down below. So the second old goat jumped on the same boat and things began to happen. He tripped on a pole and fell through a hole and he landed on top of the captain. Now it was easy to see that man number three was puzzled beyond comprehension. So what did he do? He too fell through. And what he said, I cannot mention. So man number one was feeling quite rum, but a clever idea at he. See, the thought that had got him was to go to the bottom, but he wound up in tub number three. And so he checked out the mast and decided at last to try and go over the top. And he was doing quite well until he let out a yell and hit the ground with a plop. And so he let out a sigh and decided to try his luck in tub number one. But just as before, he fell through the floor and he wound up back where he started from. And so for fun, he stayed in tub one, the second in tub number two, the third jumped with glee into tub number three, and then they all fell through. And so these three old men, embarrassed again, hid themselves from view. And at the end of the day, and at the end of the day, number one stowed away, as did man number two. As did man number two, but it didn't take long before something seemed wrong. It was as if he never departed. And so he traveled once more, confused as before, when number one wound up back where he started. And so like his friend, he traveled again, not knowing what he may find, but these two old tars didn't get very far. They couldn't leave the third behind. They couldn't leave the third behind. So the three thought at least they traveled southeast for a change of luck. They were hoping when rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, they all got jobs that they loved playing golf. <laughs> and the U.S. Open. And that, my friends, is my little golf story. Wow!
As a positivity magician, one of the most common questions I get asked is how do we stay positive while dealing with negative circumstances? And this is a fair question and a valuable one to ask when life's challenges get in our way, when they hold us back from moving forward and getting to where we most need to be in this life. What do we do? And what's worse is when our circumstances are narrow, meaning we have absolutely no wiggle room, meaning we only have one possible solution, one way out. When this happens, our happiness, our peace, our joy and success are so much tied to that one solution that when life's challenges get in the way of that solution, all of a sudden we're in a situation where we're stuck. How are we supposed to stay positive? when life's circumstances are literally stacked against us. There are a number of practices that we can employ. I am going to share with you my favorite solution because this solution can be done no matter who you are and no matter where you are or what your background is, you can do this solution when you're faced with a negative situation. And it comes to us from the movie Cast Away when Tom Hanks' character said, I've got to keep breathing because tomorrow the sun will rise. Who knows what the tide could bring in? This is a powerful, powerful line because breathing, just breathing does two things. Number one, it keeps us alive. It takes us from a moment of crisis to the moments afterwards, but it does something else as well. It does what scientists call activating the parasympathetic nervous system. This is a fancy term for a body's natural system that calms us down and de-stressing us so that we can respond well to life's challenges. So the next time you find yourself in a difficult situation, just remember to breathe. Just keep breathing. You never know what the tide might bring in.
cool here a little while. So just uh, stand right behind me here, all right? All right? And just follow along whatever I do, all right? We have a little, uh, <laughs> have a little practice music. Just stand right behind me here, that's good. Here we go, a little practice here. That's simple. Now, we're here. now in the old days they used to present song and dance men. I'll do the singing, we don't have to worry about anything else. Here we go, are you ready? Here we go. Just me and my chance.